So welcome to Stats for Psychologists. This class will show you how to analyze your data and interpret those analyses. I will not cover all the statistical concepts that they teach in a math-focused statistics course. This course is to help you analyze your data, not necessarily to, to make your own statistics or understand statistics like they do teach in the math class. I recommend that everyone in the major take Stats for Life Sciences. The generic steps that I will teach you throughout this course are to, when you get a data set, to graph it and look at the patterns in your data. The second step will be to find your p-value, see if you found a significant p-value and made a scientific discovery. Step number three will be new to you. You've probably never heard this, but find a 95% confidence interval of effect size that will allow you to identify the population effect size you were searching for. More on that in a moment. Interpret the whole thing. And finally, write it up. Let's start with our definitions. P-value is the probability of obtaining data like the data the experiment found if the null hypothesis were true. I clearly need to define the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis of no effect in the population. What does that mean? I clearly need to define the population, but no effect is going to be Dr. D shorthand for no effect of my IV on the DV, right? There's no impact of my independent variable on my dependent variable. Population is the larger group that my participants came from. And I will tell you my population for my studies. I do study racism. I generally study that within an American context. And so when I run my studies, I run them online. I get participants from all over the country of all different age ranges, you know, so, you know, socioeconomic ranges, genders, and so forth. And so my population is the larger American population. Your population, if you think about it, you're getting Regis undergrads, right? Like they do, they are Americans as well, but they're younger Americans. They... They lean a little bit more towards women in the gender, in the in the gender category, right? Edu going to college, well, there are things that you know give folks a privilege to go to college, wealth and other things. So you're going to have some biases in your sample that are going to make your population, who can you draw conclusions about, a little bit different than who I can draw conclusions about. But you are still drawing conclusions about a larger group of people than what you sampled. But I would say it's fair for you to, for you to think, oh, your population is, is probably people living in America as well that are younger, younger people living in America. I think that'd be fair. Back to the null hypothesis, right? The null hypothesis is the hypothesis of no effect in the population. The hypothesis that there's no effect in Americans. We both can kind of conclude that. People living in America. My p-value defined is the probability of obtaining data like the daily experiment found if the null were true. Let's substitute in things we know. The probability of obtaining data like the daily experiment found if there is no effect of my IV on my DV in your population. Let's keep the substitution going. The probability of obtaining data like the data the experiment found if there is no effect of my IV on my DV in Americans. That's p-value. We'll, we'll see what we do with that in a second, but that's your p-value defined. Effect sizes. What we do as psychologists, we're really good at this, is we take our statistics and we convert the effect to a small, medium, large label. A small effect, if you think about it, in terms of therapy, will have a, a little tiny effect, maybe on something like depression. A medium effect size, oh, if you created a new, new therapy to treat depression, oh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good reduction in depression. And a large effect means it has a pretty substantial impact on depression. And so our p-values that we just talked about also, you know, have a friend that they should always be discussed, which is discussed with, which is the effect size. The effect size is it a small effect? Okay. Is it a less than small effect? That's not good. Small effects are okay. Is it a medium effect? That's pretty good. Is it a large effect? That's great. The reality of effect sizes is recent research is suggesting that the average effect size in the field of psychology is a small effect. So we're going to have to kind of temper our. Inter data interpretations based on these new 
new understandings of our own field. So the 95% confidence interval is a weird definition. 95% of 95% confidence intervals contain the population value we seek. So what's the population value I seek? Oh, the, the population effect for the most part, right? But it could be anything. Like, I want to know the population effect size. We'll get to that in a few bullet points. But you might want to know the population correlation. Oh, you can find that from a 95% confidence interval. Yes, it's a weird definition. 95% of 95% confidence intervals contain the population value we seek, right? Just kind of memorize that definition, but don't, don't let it fluster you too much. All this definition is telling you is that for the most part, the population value, value you want to find is inside this interval. And it can be any number inside this interval. And of course, a 95% confidence interval of effect size is the population effect size that we are seeking. So, you know, that's the population effect of my IV on my DV in all Americans, right? That's going to be in my 95% confidence interval. So what I will know from my studies is that the Population effect size for Americans is inside this interval for my studies. For your studies, you'll know something sim similar. Just remember, the population effect size can be anything inside that interval. Now, let's do some practice problems just to make sure we know what to do. We have a definition of p-value. We don't know what to do with that yet. We have a definition of 95% confidence interval. We're probably getting an idea of what to do with that. Let's, let's figure this out. So practice problem number one. Your p-value is zero. This is like the smallest p-value you can get. What do we know? The probability of obtaining data like the data the experiment found if the null hypothesis were true. That's your p-value. So p-value is the probability of obtaining data like the data the experiment found if the manipulation had no impact on the outcome in Americans, if the IV had no impact on the DV in Americans. There is a 0, 0.00 probability of obtaining data like ours if the manipulation had no impact on the outcome in Americans. Probability times 100 is percentage, and I'm going to reorganize this a little bit to make it make, make more sense. But if my manipulation had no impact on the outcome in Americans, we would obtain data like ours 0% of the time. That does that suggest something really important when you're thinking about it even though i'm just giving you the definition that suggests that we would not obtain data like ours in a world where there was no effect of the iv on the dv in the population and this is actually a good thing because we want to disprove the null hypothesis ah keep that in mind you're asking so what and i was giving you a lead into so what in the previous slide when your p-value is less than 0.05, it suggests the null hypothesis is false. Remember, the null hypothesis is the hypothesis of no effect of your IV on your DV in the population. So when your p-value is less than 0.05, you're basically disproving the null hypothesis, statistically disproving the null hypothesis that there is no effect of your manipulation on the DV in the population you're interested in. If my manipulation had no impact on the outcome in Americans, we would obtain data like ours 0% of the time. Thus, my data are unlikely to come from a world where the null is true. My where when the null is true is when my manipulation has no effect on the outcome, when my IV has no effect on the DV. Thus, my data probably came from a world where the null is false. My manipulation has an effect on the outcome. That's really important, right? That's what we do. That's what it means. When your P is less than 0.05, you're saying there is an effect in the population. I do want to talk about the word if. You'll see me use the word if a lot in the discussion of p-values. If means imagine. Because this is what statisticians do. They create and they play and they pretend and they think of worlds that don't exist in a in the way that all humans do, but they present it in math form. So when I use the word if the null, if and if the null hypothesis were true, I'm saying imagine a world where the null hypothesis were true, right? I want you to understand that I do not know for any experiment that I ever run if my null hypothesis is true or false absolutely because 
I can't run an experiment on all Americans. I just can't. In order for me to know the population effect, I need to run my experiment on all people in my population. I will never be able to do that. So we create these imaginary worlds, or statisticians create these imaginary worlds to help us draw conclusions. So what they really do is turn these imagined worlds into complex formulas, equations, and algorithms that we don't need to understand, but I want you to know that they exist. When I say the word if in these definitions of p-value, I'm saying if we imagine a world where the null hypothesis are true, not in a world where we know the null hypothesis is true, like we will never know that. This is an imaginary world, right? So I'm trying to see if my data disprove the imaginary world. That's what we're doing. When p is less than 0.05, we say, hey, oh, our data don't fit this imaginary world where the independent variable has no effect on the dependent variable in the population. So this is just the recurring point. When your p-value is less than 0.05, your evidence suggests the null is false. The null is no effect in the population. A false null is an effect in the population. That's it. When p is less than 0.05, you're like, I found an effect. This is a statistically significant effect. This is a quote-unquote scientific discovery. And that's what you know. Here's another problem. Your p is greater than your p is 0.25. P is greater than 0.05. This is not a discovery. This is not a significant effect. In an imaginary world where my manipulation had no impact on the outcome in Americans, we would obtain data like ours 25% of the time. It, in an imaginary world where the null hypothesis is true, we would obtain data like ours 25% of the time. In this, in the, with this result, we are not confident that the null is false. We have not disproven the null. The p-value is too high. So then when the p-value is greater than 0.05, you're like, well, do we know the null is true and there is no effect of my manipulation on the outcome in the population? No, but I need to explain why. I'm going to use an example to do that. One of the strongest effects in the field of, of psychology is that studying improves grades. I tried to replicate this effect. I ran an experiment where participants were randomly assigned to study or not and completed the test. I scored these tests. And then I recently hired this cute toddler research assistant, you know, came to the job and he could only count to one. You know, I let it slide. He, he interviewed really well. He won me over. I feel like this, this little guy has a future. So his job was just to help me with data entry. I split the, I you know, had a packet of tests for those participants in the control condition and a packet of tests for those in the study condition. I first gave the packet for those in the study condition to my my assistant. And I just, I just asked that assistant, hey, read the circled number on the front. I'm gonna enter it in the computer. Well, for every single participant, he told me one. He did the same thing in the control group as well. For every participant, he told me one. My p-value equals one, right? So I know the null's false, right? Because in an imaginary world where my independent variable, studying or not, has no effect on the outcome, the dependent variable, test scores, I would obtain data like mine 100% of the time. Hmm. What am I missing? I'm missing my incompetence in entering the data, right? I made a huge mistake. I, you know, hired this cute little toddler who didn't have the right qualifications to help me enter the data, and I made a big mistake. The lesson here is you can get large p-values for two reasons. The null is true, or you ran a bad study. Just like I said before, when p-value is greater than 0.05, you know nothing. The null could be true, or you ran a bad study. This leads to our decision rule for p-values. P-value less than 0.05 is a scientific discovery. It's what people call a significant effect. Your, what it means is that your data are improbable in the imaginary world where the null hypothesis is false and your independent variable has no impact on the dependent variable for your population. Your data likely come from a world where the null is false. All that means is that there is an impact of your independent variable on your dependent variable 
in the population. The null hypothesis is there is not, you know, right? if the null is false, there is. You found an effect. Now, you don't know the size of that effect. You need to keep that in mind, but when p is less than 0.05, you found an effect. When your p is greater than 0.05, you know nothing because the null could be true or you ran bad science, just like the previous example. All right, let's, what do we know when we have a 95% confidence interval? These are 95% confidence intervals of effect size. Let's say, you know, let's say it's for my, my studying experiment. If this, if I got a 95% confidence interval that was from large to large, I know my population effect size is large, right? The impact of my IV on my DV is large. That one's easy. Let's go on to problem number two. If my 95% confidence interval of effect size is from negative large to positive large, the negative in this example means that my effect is the opposite from what I predicted, right? The positive means it's in the direction I predicted. So I know that the population effect size could be anything from a negative large effect to a negative medium effect to a negative small effect to a negative less than small effect. All those effects are in the opposite direction that I predicted. I know that there could be no effect whatsoever, the null could be true, or it could be a less than small positive effect in the direction I predicted, studying improves grades, a uh, small effect in the direction I predict, predicted, studying improves grades, a medium effect in the direction I predicted, studying improves grades, and a large effect in the direction I predicted, studying improves grades. The negative effect is that studying would harm grades. So in that second example, oh, I know nothing. The population effect size could be anything. With that experiment, I should rerun it because I know nothing. And then if my 95% confidence interval was less than small to large, I do know that my p-value would be less than 0.05, okay? I'm pointing this out because this is all you know when your p-value is less than 0.05. I know that studying improves grades, but the effect could be so small that we don't care. Small, it small, it matters, but just a little, it has a little tiny effect. It's a medium effect, a good size effect, or it's a large effect, a nice strong effect. So these 95% confidence intervals tell us everything p-values do, plus more, right? I can tell p-value from a 95% confidence interval. For example, the p-value for this first 95% confidence interval is less than 0.05 because the null value is not in the interval. For the second 95% confidence interval, I know my p is greater than 0.05 because the null value is in the interval. And finally, for the for the third one, I also know that my p-value is less than 0.05 because the null value is not in the interval. It's really just that simple. These are my population effect sizes. The potential, the potential population effect sizes, I don't know which one it is when there's more than one option, but I do know that my population effect size is inside the 95% confidence interval. Now you're going to see something, you're going to ask a question, it's a question I get every year I teach this. Um, why do so many scientists only use the p-value? And this is becoming less and less common. I do ask that you Google this and, and look at it for yourself. Go Google this question. You'll see that in many fields, many statisticians within that field are suggesting that they should not be using p-values only. Um, you will see cer certain fields like biology and chemistry and neuroscience do use p-values. Um, psychology uses p-values and 95% confidence intervals. And oddly enough, physics only really, really only uses 95% confidence intervals and doesn't doesn't really use p-value. I mean, they report it too, so it's it's kind of interesting. But a lot of my students come to me, they're like, p-value is the only thing that matters, right? And I'm like, well, not really, okay? If you look at a significant p-value, you're saying that your null hypothesis is false. The null hypothesis just says there is no effect in the population. If you're showing that false, you're saying there is some effect, right? But that effect could be so small it doesn't matter, like a less than small effect. Also, 95% confidence intervals give you your p give you your p value, particularly um, when they're of an effect size. And so, you know, I don't know why the 95% confidence intervals of effect sizes weren't the default, aren't the default that we're using. But 
they are the better they are the better measure and i will back that up with science what you see here is the result of an experiment conducted by a quantitative psychologist quantitative psychologists they don't test how numbers impact humans feelings no 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 they test what statistical procedures we should use to find truth so this specific study started with a massive two massive excel files one that represented the population mean for a control group and one that represented the population mean for experimental group imagine they had a million observations inside each excel file and each of those observations they don't represent a real person they represent a hypothetical person but both of those excel files represent populations okay the population for the control condition and the population for the experimental condition this is important because we can never know we can never actually run an experiment on populations in the real world so these two imaginary worlds were created right with two different populations right and two different known population means when you looked at these two population populations compared to each other you saw that the control groups population mean was 10 units higher or i'm sorry the experimental groups population population mean was 10 units higher than the control groups population mean so we actually know the population effect the population effect of the iv on the dv in this case is a 10 unit mean difference so the population mean difference is known in this quantitative example this is not an experiment run on people right this experiment is actually testing how likely the statistics we use are to find the truth so let's let's go back here our p-value is trying to disprove the null hypothesis right if our p-value is less than 0 0.05 that suggests our null hypothesis is false we started off with a population mean difference of 10 which means we know our population um the null hypothesis is false in our population we know that right so our so our p-value should be significant what they did in this experiment was then take both of those populations and randomly sample like 20 participants from the control group randomly sample 20 participants from the experimental population right calculate the p-value statistics and saw how many of them led to truth so they did that 25 times randomly sampled okay about 20 participants from the control group 20 participants from the experimental group that is they basically ran an experiment they didn't need people to run the experiment but they basically did what we did they randomly sampled participants from two populations and ran a p-value on it what percentage of the time did this p-value correctly reject the null hypothesis and find significance one two three four five six these were all 25 different experiments seven eight nine ten eleven out of 25 of those experiments where they randomly sample people from the population in the control group and they randomly sample people from the experimental population you know calculate the p-value less than 50 percent of those found truth that should really make you question whether or not you should trust p-value only statistics because they lead to the wrong conclusion a lot of the time that's what our quantitative psychologist friends are telling us now they also calculated for each of those experiments they also calculated the 95 percent confidence interval now remember 95 percent and 95 percent confidence intervals should contain the population value we are interested in that is a mean difference of 10 the population mean difference is 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 23 out of 25 over 90 percent of the 95 percent confidence intervals contain the true population value that we seek so when students ask me hey dr d why do we use 95 percent confidence intervals not just p values well that's because p values don't lead to truth as often as people think but 95 percent confidence intervals contain the population value we're seeking in this case a mean difference ultimately i don't think we should stop using p-values people will still ask us to to use them i think they're fine for me in my own work when my p-value is greater than 0.05 i look at the 95 percent confidence interval 
And I, I try to figure out, well, is the null true or did I likely make a mistake in my experiment? So for me, I use both together. So p value less than 0.05, I need that to be like, hey, I know the null hypothesis is false. But then I want that 95% confidence interval to tell me what the population effect I'm interested in is. But if you use p-values by themselves, you're going to make the wrong conclusion over half the time. You're actually better off flipping a coin than just trusting your p-values based on this work, which is based on small sample sizes, which is kind of how you're going to run your studies too. So this is a really important slide. For the test, I want you to interpret p-values. P-value, like that actual definition, I want you to define it, right? You saw how I broke it down. That was most of today's lecture was me like, oh, well, what's the null hypothesis? Oh, what's the population and so forth? Um, so I want you to be able to do that, but I also want you to know the decision rule. P less than 0.05, significant. P greater than 0.05, not significant. P less than 0.05, my evidence suggests the null is not true, thus the null is probably false, that there is an effect in the population, right? I want you to know that. P greater than 0.05 by itself, uh, I don't really know that much. You know what I mean? The null hypothesis could be true or I could have made a mistake. I want you to interpret 95% confidence intervals in that you know the population value you seek is inside of there. Particularly, I'm interested in 95% confidence intervals of effect sizes, like those problems we did. I'd like you to know what a 95% confidence interval gives us that a p-value does not. And also, I'd like you to know the percentage of times that the p-value gives you truth versus the 95% confidence interval. Less than 50%, greater than 90%. What does the 95% confidence interval give us that a p-value does not? When we have a significant p... I'll answer that one right now, just for, because that's going to be hard. When p is less than 0.05, I, you know, basically know that the null hypothesis is false. The null hypothesis is that there is no effect of my IV on the DV in the population. So I know there's some effect of the IV on the DV in the population. I just don't know what it is. The 95% confidence interval of effect size tells me that effect size, tells me the size of the effect. P-values just tells me, hey, the null's false. There is no effect. 95% confidence intervals of effect size tell me what that effect is.